Do you want to make better videos that are fun to watch, that are cool for you to watch with your family and your friends? Then hang tight, because in this video, we're going to walk through simple steps so that you can sh create videos that are worth sharing, watching over and over. So let's get started. Hey there, my name is Evan, and this channel is all about helping you capture, create, and share your precious memories. Are you one of those people that likes to capture every minute of all of your activities with your family? I am that person. But the problem that we have is that we capture those events and those activities on the camera, and it takes hours of videos, hours of photos, or lots of photographs. And what do we do with them? We either keep them on the device or the camera that we're using, we dump them to the computer, or hopefully you're not doing this, but you may be deleting the videos. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Or are you the opposite of that? Do you hesitate to not put the camera out? Don't pull the phone out to, watch, to record this. I don't want to be yelled up in somebody's face. I'm afraid somebody's going to say, don't put me on camera, and they put their hands up. We're going to talk about those people in another video. No matter which person you are, whether you're the one that has always has the camera out or you're the one that is hesitant to bring the camera out, I am here to give you the confidence to use your camera and to make memorable videos that are able to watch over and over and over. But keep watching because there's going to be a bonus tip. Yep, three plus one is four tips that will make your video stand out even more, that will make your family or your friends say, man, that was so cool, I wanna do that. Show me how you did that, that was so fun. So stick with me. Before we get to those three tips, I want to share with you one pro tip. Record with intention. Yes, I said it, record with intention. Yes, you could set the camera out, let's say you're gonna have a family football game in the backyard. You could set your camera up and set it on the porch and. Just record all the action. But that's a long lots of video to go back through just to pick out some clips here and there. Unless you want to watch the whole ball game. But with this pro tip, I want you to record with intention. Why is that important? This will save you hours in editing and collecting the, the videos when you get ready to publish. The key here is to pick parts of the action parts of the event, record it, and move along. Okay, so let's get started with the steps. First tip number one, changing your perspective. When it comes to putting the camera on the porch and capturing a football game in your backyard, yes, you will capture the whole angle, everybody in that. But when I said record with intention, Think about, we're going to be recording a ball game or you're going to be recording some kind of event. Take your camera out, move it to a different side of the yard, make it see the whole port, the whole yard or just a part, part of the activity going on. Choose a different angle, make it be seen from who's got the ball, following the person behind them, make it be seen from them catching the ball, whatever you think, but change the perspective. Okay, so let's look at a couple of options. The first option would be, like I said, looking at a third person at the event or activity, looking at it from a third person view. Yes, that's good to do. Here's a just a still shot of us, well, my wife and I, having our niece and nephew over for the week, and we like to play board games. I like to take the camera out, set it up in different angles around the wherever we're playing the board game or if we're outside swimming in the pool or whatever, moving it around. But with intention, I set the camera up and I get a wide shot of all of us. And then I take the camera and I put in, I'm holding it and I'm showing you me playing my hand of that game. And then I set the camera on the other side and you can see my face and I'm in the video. Another angle would be to have one of the kids holding the camera 
and seeing it from their side, over their shoulder, or from from their hands and their point of view. So different angles could be a situation where you're looking from outside in, eye level, and first person. Another option, another activity that we played, and speaking of like the, the football game outside, is I went and played freeze tag at one with some of my nieces and nephews. Yeah, I shouldn't be playing freeze tag. I'm a little old for that, but oh well, I like to do it. One, one little hesitation I want to give you here is that I want you to, it needs to not make the viewer dizzy. You don't want to be constantly moving the camera around all the time. You want to record that portion and set the camera down or move it let it record but don't constantly move the camera now I will take this back and say that there was one video one example that I want to show you and that one video that I'm going to show you now and at this zoo we're going through the area where the kangaroos are and the sidewalk is painted with steps of different animals and how far they can jump and as we're walking through that area you can see that the kangaroos have footprints where they jump and I said okay I let the niece jump I'm um, so I'm recording from outside at eye level looking at her jumping and then my nephew is jumping as well but then I take the camera I say look watch me and I'm holding the camera as you can see in this clip and I'm jump making the jumps yes it's a little bit of dizziness but you can feel the viewer can feel the action step number two or tip number two I should say is lighting make sure that you have enough lighting to capture the activity there are two basic sources of light you've got natural light and artificial light and hopefully those are self-explanatory but we can get in those in another video but you want to make sure that whatever light source that you're using is enough that the camera will be able to capture the activity clearly. So, okay, so you got natural lighting. Natural lighting is, like I said, it's natural. It comes, it's while you're outside, it's the sun. The, some of the best natural lighting that you can have is a cloudy day. It draw, makes a diffuser of the sun so there's no harsh lighting and there's not any direct shadows that are taking place. So if you're outside and it's a good cloudy day, that's the best time to have the camera on. If it's a bright sunny day, again, make sure that the light source is on the subject, but it's behind the camera. You're not viewing directly at the, cam the light source with the camera. So move the camera to a different angle, a different perspective. And remember, again, I said record with intention. So then you have not artificial light. Artificial light is lamps. I have a few lamps here. I've got one back here. I've got lighting in this room that I can control the lighting. So artificial lighting. But in a house, you may have lamps. You have overhead lighting. Just make sure that the light source is bright enough for the camera. I've seen a lot of videos over time with people that share with me their home video and they didn't have a light on or the lamp that was on the person is standing above the lamp and so the light is below them and you can't see that person's face and so it's not that fun to watch so make sure that the lighting is adequate and is shining on the person you don't want to blind them you want to create natural responses but you want to make sure that the lighting is capturing them or that whatever the activity is your subject i hope this information is being helpful to you so we're about to take on tip number three but remember there's a bonus tip at the end so make sure you keep watching okay you want to make sure that you have good clean audio yes a good crisp picture a clear focused picture on the camera is great but if you can't understand what's being said then the audio is the second most important another the third most important thing here is lighting clear picture and audio your audio your camera if you're using a, a point-and-shoot type camera a mirrorless camera if you're using an action camera even if you're using your smartphone as a camera there are a lot of ways to capture video and ways to capture the activities that your family is using audio is kind of a tricky thing here because you have 
this little bitty microphone right there, I don't know if you can see it, but this little bitty microphone here is what's on this camera. On your action cameras, let's see if you can see it here, on your action cameras, the microphone is one little bitty dot on here, right there. You can't even see it. And sometimes your finger will cover that dot up. So you wanna make sure that your audio is in good, clear ways. Uh, your cell phone the microphone is is on the side here, so you don't want to cover up the microphone. Definitely won't cover up the lens, but you don't want to cover up the microphone. If you're using a camera that's similar to this, and your cell phone, there are jacks. Hopefully, you have a phone that doesn't have a that has a jack on it, but it has a jack for you to be able to plug in a microphone into. Or if you're using a camera like this, you can go with something like this. Now this has a little bitty microphone built into it, but this is like a wind screen. So when we're out and about and it's windy, you're not getting it. But these will plug into the microphone jack on the camera and they'll sit on the camera like this. A lot of people don't understand how well this will enhance the audio of your video and make it worth watching. So if you have a camera, whatever camera you're using, Make sure that your audio is also being captured in a clear way. If you're not able to have one of those microphones like this one right here, then make sure that you get the camera because you could be using your cell phone. Make sure you're getting it close enough to the person if you're wanting to be able to understand. And a microphone like this one on this camera or on this phone or on this camera here is right here. So it's capturing a wide angle of audio. It's, it's not focused. When you have a microphone such as this one, it's what they call a boom mic. It has a, um, it's pointing directly at the, what you're filming. So you wanna make sure that it's in the right direction. Um, like I said, these are great, but they capture everything in the room. And I'm not trying to upsell you on equipment because we're gonna have a, a video soon that will tell you how you can take your cell phone and make awesome videos. You can take your action cam and make awesome videos. You can even take your point and shoot or your mirrorless DSLRs and make awesome videos. You don't have to have fancy high-end equipment to make great videos. But remember, audio is important. But this step is about audio, is about capturing the person or the subject sounds but keep in mind that if you're wanting to uh, narrate you can later come back and put the video clips together and then you can set up a microphone and narrate what is happening if the audio is not in good shape for like say if you're outside and you're playing football and you want to be a commentator then yes you can come back over and narrate the video which is fun to do as well Another op thing about audio is if you're wanting to share the audio, if you want to put this video on a social media platform, you have to be aware of copyright claims. Uh, a artist creates music and they put their heart and soul into writing that song and creating the melody that goes with it. And if you're just throwing it out there without using their permission, then you're not following the copyright laws which that social media platform should be following and then they won't play the audio so you will if you're wanting to play just music yes there's a lot of popular awesome songs out there but if you're just wanting to play music in the background some if you share your video on social media it may get cut or it may get muted during the fun part of the video that you've worked so hard to get so make sure that you're using music that is licensed for those social media platforms Okay, we've gone over three simple tips, techniques, or and adjustments that will make capturing your family fun more enjoyable for you. You're the one that's gonna be go collecting all of this video footage and editing it later. So with these three simple tips, I hope that that will help you along the way. Remember, I promised you a bonus. And we're gonna move on to that bonus tip now, but after the bonus, I wanna make sure that you stay with me because I have a challenge for you. A challenge for you, the viewers of this. If you think that this is, video is giving you a lot of good, 
content and it's helping giving you valuable content to creating videos, give this a thumbs up. Also subscribe to our channel. I will be making more videos like this soon and I want you to be able to go back to this channel regularly and help us out so that we can create the content for you. Okay, so on to the bonus tip. That bonus tip is, nope, you didn't get to it. It's storytelling. Using the technique of storytelling helps enhance the video. It brings the viewer along a journey. And with by doing this, we follow what's called a story arc. That means that you have a who, a what, or when, or where the story is taking place, whatever it may be. And along the way, there's a conflict that keeps that pr from progressing. Or there's decisions that need to be made that will make the story continue and then there's a resolution to finish the story which then provides an emotional ending a satisfaction a happy a joyful thing that took place okay so you've got this story arc that takes place now here's what's hard if you're just capturing everyday events there's not always a story involved but yet is there let me give you an example one example that we have in a storytelling situation is just making pancakes. Now, like I said, we're talking about capturing videos of your family, things that are fun to share, some things that are fun to relive, some things that you want to keep on hold of forever. Remember, I mentioned my niece and nephew. They come over quite a bit and we go see them quite a bit and we go on vacations with their family as well. And one of the things that we like to do is make pancakes simple right making pancakes so I do I just set the camera up and let it record no I follow those three tips those three techniques and this bonus tip of the storytelling you want to make pancakes that's the what we are going to make pancakes we're going to do it as a family that's the who we're going to do it in the kitchen that's the where but there's a problem you gather all the ingredients thinking you've got everything together and now we use we can do pancakes from scratch we can do the pancakes in a box but you're going to need a couple of ingredients let's say once you gather the ingredients you do not have the milk and you need the milk to make the batter fluffy what do you do on the camera you say we're getting ready to make pancakes as a family. Everybody get all the ingredients together. We don't have the milk. Oh no, what do we do? We go to the car. We get in the car. We go to the grocery store. You don't have to capture all this happening. But the, oh no, we don't have milk. We can't make pancakes. So you go get the milk. You come home quickly. And then you start mixing. The mixing of the pancakes can resume. Once you get all the ingredients mixed together, you get ready to put the mix into the skillet and you're going to go ahead and pour it into the skillet and you realize oh wait when i went to go get the milk i turned the skillet off so now the skillet's not hot so now we have to wait another conflict another setback do we just okay here's the decision we didn't have milk do we go ahead and make pancakes yep we're going to push through it so we go get the milk now the skillet's not hot we spent 30 45 minutes an hour later and we still haven't started even making the pancakes do we continue doing this? Yes, we're gonna push through this and we're gonna make pancakes. Another part of the arc you could happen, because this is real life that we're recording here, it's not that we're making this stuff up, but you get to finally get the skillet hot. You pour the mix onto the bowl, onto the skillet, and the phone rings. And you start talking on the phone to whoever. Now, you're trying to, you're doing this as a family, but you want to make sure that if you've got little kids, they're not the ones that are actually touching the hot skillet and the grease. What happens while you're on the phone? The pancakes burn. Oh no, another setback. But we're going to push through this. We're going to make sure that we get these pancakes cooked and we're going to enjoy them. So after the phone conversation, you hang up, you get back, you get the mix poured back onto another batch of pancakes poured on the skillet. Now we're able to continue working. We're flipping pancakes. We're flipping them and flipping them and they're coming out good and golden. As they start to stack up on the plate, you're getting ready to serve them. You're putting the butter on them 
and you're getting ready to serve them to your family and the kids are helping and they're doing what their, their part they set the table for breakfast on a saturday morning and we're having fun and there's laughs and there may be a mess but that's okay because what we are pushing through to have this fun time with our family with our kids or whoever it may be we've got this stack of golden pancakes each one person gets their pancake, sets it on their plate, and they pour the syrup on it. And what happens that first bite? Mmm, yumminess. We have completed a story arc. We have gone from the who, the what, and the where to an initial conflict. We didn't have the milk. We had to go get the milk. And when we came back, another conflict. The skillet was not hot enough, so we had to wait on the skillet to get hot again. And we burned the first round of pancakes because the phone rang, another conflict, but we kept going up the arch. As we kept going up the arch, we kept making progress. Will our viewers know if we ever actually finished the pancakes or not? At the end of the video, we find the satisfaction. We've pushed through, we made that journey to do so, and yes, those pancakes sure are good, and you've got a view of your kids biting into those pancakes and smiling and sure are happy that you push through with all that syrup on top of them okay so that's kind of an that's our storytelling example of making pancakes making sure that we complete an arc so if you combine that with setting up different angles per first person third person right in the middle of the mix literally not in the bowl of mix but right in the middle of the action of making the pancakes and then we add make sure that we have a good lighting source so that the light is behind and shining on our, our subject at the time that we're what we have the camera on and we are using good audio to make sure that we're hearing the snack well, the popping of the grease and the pancakes being in the bowl and then mmm at the end all of this brings about a beautiful picture that your family, your friends will love to watch. Okay? Remember, at the first, we got the milk and then we realized, hey, we messed up. Yeah, we could have stopped there and just said, we're just going to eat cereal. Everybody eat dry cereal. We don't have milk. We're just going to eat the dry cereal. No, we're not going to. But you push through. And that is a an emotional resolve which finishes the story up is that you pushed through and everyone was happy that you were able to eat the pancakes and they were good and go i'm getting hungry are you guys getting hungry Whew. i'm getting hungry i'm gonna go make some pancakes but first i have a challenge for you i have a challenge for you guys before we i go make the pancakes okay so this challenge is for you this is homework a challenge however you want to look at it but this is a challenge for you to take out your phone, take out your action cameras, take out your DSLR, your point and shoot cameras, your home video cameras, whatever it is that you can capture with. All of these tips can be used on all of these different fancy or not fancy devices. But a challenge for you, find an activity that your family loves to do. Find, may it be playing football in the yard, may it be, or baseball or wiffle ball, volleyball whatever that activity may be maybe just playing board games or it could be cooking like in our example of the pancakes find an activity that you want to do and apply these simple tips remember the pro tip record with intention tip number one was using perspectives tip number two was lighting making sure you get a good lighting tip number three is audio making sure you have good clear audio and our bonus tip is capturing it and recording it. And when you get ready to edit it into a story arc, I hope this video has been valuable to you. I would really again appreciate you liking and subscribing to this video and check out these other videos while you get a chance. All right, guys, I'm going to go make some pancakes and I hope you get to enjoy capturing your challenge and putting two tips together. See you later.